during my presentation, I'm trying to answer a basic question about what are the many changes that happened to uh, student activism in the Egyptian university now after the revolution. And to do so, I will raise um, about four major points. The first one is about the student activism before the revolution and during the revolution and now. And also, the fourth point is about the future and the major obstacles facing creating a more strong student movement. Uh, and the, the main question here for me is the question of organization, which is, could be, in my opinion, the solution for creating a more strong platform and a more strong student movement. The first article, article of the Egyptian University Law stated that universities are the space of freedom of thought and expression, and they aim to progress of science and the development of human values. While universities provide the country with specialists, technicians, and experts in various fields, it also prepares the human provider with assets of knowledge and research. Um, it positively should contribute to the future of the country and the humanity which is make a great sense. Finally, it states also that the state should guarantee the independence of university to create the link between higher education in general and the need of society and production. This is the, ro the, uh, the role of the Egyptian universities according to the law. However, the important question here are, does the Egyptian government support universities to play this role or not? And also, if we are discover in a minute that it didn't, our universities are able to face the constructions and obstacles that government control try to do all over the last 10 or 20 years. Okay. In present, uh, in response to this question, I'm trying to reflect uh, some point, and it actually it's from my work in Association for Freedom of Thought and Expression, which had a program, separate program, uh, focusing on student rights and academic freedoms. And during the last two or three years, I think I had a formulating some kind of a vision of the situation before the revolution regarding the student rights and the student movement in general, and also during the revolution and raise also some question regarding the expecting role of the revolution in coming year. Before 25th, generally, we can say during the last 10 years, student movement was very weak, especially if we could compare it with student role um, in the political activism in general, in universities, in some specific point in the Egyptian history, like 70s and also 40s, which were student movement were extremely strong and extremely uh, affecting the whole picture in Egypt. During the last 10 years, most of the university students were not really interested in doing any kind of activism. The major of them, not all of them. The student unions and clubs was extremely weak and was also extremely fully controlled by the student administration and state security people who are officially working inside the campus. And also, the student election was not more than a fight between university administration and some politically activist students, especially from Muslim Brothers movement, who were excluded from the election and also being prohibited uh, from participation. And no one else from other students actually were care about the whole situation. However, a few student groups, mainly from leftist, we can say, leftist background, try to gain some space on the ground. And they face a major violations that could reach in some, in some cases using violence against them, being arrested or dismissed from their, in, their own college. However, they kept trying and trying, but the movement actually was a reflection for the political situation outside the university camps. Um, 
6 to April group, if anyone uh, aware about it, and also Kifaya, which is enough, who are started working by 2004 and 2005, who were mainly working on a general political agenda, calling for political reform, democracy, and social justice, with no any specific ideology, and also, in a few cases, these groups inside the campus tried to raise a student agenda working on uh, corruption inside, against corruption inside a campus to uh, facilitate, to, to enhance the university facilities, to also against the student, the high student fees, and so on. What makes this very complicated situation? We can say first the, leg, the legal frame, as the legal frame work that uh, regulate universities <coughs> Sorry. Um, put a lot of obstacles in front of any kind of student activism, especially right to assembly, right to uh, um, organization, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and so on. And we can say it, generally it created a state of intellectual tourism in the Egyptian universities. It limited any kind of real changes, or uh, sorry, chances for a student organization. And limited also other rights, including freedom of speech, assembly, and even to work on non-political activists. The law of the organization also included um, multiple articles that govern even for academics, not only for the students, that gives the government the full control over the university through the appointment uh, of the university from the president of Egypt, the ex-president of Egypt, and also this uh, president hire the deans and the leaders, other leaders and other administrative people. So that's how it was fully controlled by, from the president of Egypt himself and all the way down. And it was well known that to get any high post in any academic institution in Egypt, you need to have a very good relation with the state security people who actually control the whole thing. Also, the regulation of the organization um, in terms of law imposed many restrictions on the rights of students of uh, freedom of organization that was very clear if we take the student elections, an example for that. It put a very complex condition for a student to be elected or to participate in the elections regarding the student unions in order to uh, it legally justify the university administration and security agencies to interfere in the elections. The university admi administration permission was required before doing any kind of student activities, <coughs> even um, if a very illegal formal student union tried to do some kind of event or, or party even, the administration permission is required and they can stop any kind of activities in any time they want. So that is one reason why the situation was that bad. And also, other reason is related to the practices itself for the administration and for the secu secu state security people who were, as I said, fully controlled the whole situation. How the security bodies were given the full control over the student activities and the student union elections, as I said, they can prevent politically active student from being nominated in union elections and they also use violence in many cases against peaceful non-violent students who were trying to do any kind of protest or demonstration or whatever. The security control has led to creation this extremely complex and bad situation and it contributed for sure to decline in, participa in participation of the majority of the students due to fear of being uh, of suppression. It's very depressing, okay, I know. <laughs> However, 
some small group, as I said, active group, mainly from leftist perspective, not, we cannot say that they have a clear ideology, however, they are near to be from leftist perspective, like, as I said, 6 April group, or Kefaya, or after that, a group that works as socialist or leftist with these slogans. And also, on the other side, there were Muslim Brothers students who were mainly working on the same agenda like Muslim Brothers outside the universities. So the picture was like that. Then, 25th, during the revolution, the 18 days revolution, or phase one of the revolution, students were a, a part of the massive movement in Tahrir Square and other squares all over Egypt. And after that, after the second semester, directly after Mubarak stepped down, uh, after the second semester began, and it was one month after Mubarak stepped down, with all the passion of, and enthusiasm of the Hughes Square, the student tried to transfer all this passion inside the campus, inside their, their own campus. And also, from the other side, the administration of universities stated very clearly that their fear from the university, uh, uh, from the uprising or the anger students, <coughs> the anger student, and they tried to do anything to just control this student's anger. What happened was the first day of the new semester, students started protesting against their own university administrations, uh, who were chosen and hired from the past regime, based on their relationship with, which was well known to everyone, with the state security people and also with uh, the NDB, the National Democratic Party, who were ruling at that time. So. Um, this people, the administration, the president of university, the deans all over the Egyptian universities were actually presenting the old regime so that students choose this as the first priority to work on from day one when they back to the universities. Not a very long time later, also professor takes the same demand and start working very hardly to get read of all the old uh, people from the old regime and asking for um, elections instead of hiring people with specific political agenda. And luckily they succeeded and two or three months ago a lot of um, elections in a lot of universities all over Egypt happened. The result wasn't that good most of them were re-elected again, like what happened in Cairo University, which was extremely depressing. However, the election was done. Um, but we can say all these factors, all this movement, creates a new movement. It started from Cairo University and expanded, expanded in many universities and colleges inside and outside Cairo. Not very long time uh, later, as I said, the elections already done, and now the students faced a new phase about working this time against the SCAF, who were in the, in the phase two from the revolution, the, the clear enemy to each one. The SCAF is the military, the Supreme Council of, of Armed Forces, yeah. <laughs> okay. However, this protesting movement actually creates a new student movement with a new spirit. They're using a very new strategy that wasn't very well known before in the inside campus. They mainly inspired from the spirit of Tahrir Square, they were uh, using the same slogans, same songs, same strategies, 
same, even same demands like freedom, social justice, and the human dignity. Also, they're using the same strategies as that, like striking, daily marches, demonstration, and so on. However, these new groups didn't get a great success in terms of building a clear and systematic organization and also in creating a clear political agenda or even agenda that's more close to student demands. So it may be succeeded to transfer the spirit and culture of the Hay Square inside the campus. However, it didn't succeed. It didn't gain a huge success in terms of creating a long-term agenda that could help in creating an organization of the students. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> okay. Pictures. <laughs> yeah, I had to start a long time ago, but um, I'm still it might be interesting. Okay, here is a picture a demonstration in front of the main building of Cairo University. It's not clear, right? It's not? Okay. This is a picture for a demonstration in front of the main building in Cairo University, actually in front of uh, the president of Cairo University office, demanding him to be dismissed. That was, I think, March 2011. And this was a strike for about three weeks till the university professor decided to work on the same demands and building a clear vision of elections for, uh, for the administration of the university. This is also a picture from the same events with a lot of girls and flags. This is faculty of law in Cairo University, and we can say it's considered as a massive demonstration comparing with actually the demonstrations that was happening in the university the last two or three years. Here is the strike, and some students staying at night inside the campus. That's one, two of my students actually, so <laughs> I like this picture <laughs> during the strike. Here is the main demand that was, uh, that was stated, like dismissing the um, president of the university, also the deans of most of college who were also well known, uh, uh, it will, well known to everyone that they were corrupted besides their cooperation with the state security people. Here is some girl saying, some statement in front of also the office of the president. Okay, as I'm saying, this new movement created a new spirit and yes, it was clear once again when the second movement of the revolution started against the SCAF, the military, and get it um, to the maxim maximum point during the last months, university, also played, university students played a great role actually on this. They're protesting against the SCAF, presenting photos, videos, and short films showing their violations, the SCAF violations against the peaceful uh, protesters in Tahir Square and, and other places. It became a very regular action in most of universities, and in some periods, it's a daily, on a daily basis. And what, this is really interesting because Egyptian universities in general are considered very conservative. An example for this, using ultra songs, which is Amar was talking about, and ultra song is extremely considered radical and in some term we can say impolite, using um, a very bad words towards the scaf and towards the uh, police and so on. So singing such songs in mics inside a university campus and the deans already in front of the deans and in front of the administration that was extremely progressive to happen uh, in Cairo University, for example, and in other universities also. 
So, um, also another example, actually, I forgot, uh, it's um, what happened in the beginning, in the current semester, that was around two months ago, in a response for the strike call that was against the military also, uh, and calling for uh, an early elections, an early presidential elections, the university students and the university, even the university as a school, oh, sorry, the school students were two of the most active groups who, are, who were actually the most effective in the whole situation during this strike. Another very important point regarding the new students and the new situation in general is the private universities. We have two main types of universities, the public one, which is governed by the government, and also the private, which is under uh, a different law, and the situation regarding the, the private universities were extremely bad, actually, even, even worse than the public ones. It were uh, very rare to find any active group of a student working inside a private, a private university. And actually, you, no one focused or working on activism. They didn't even have a student union in most cases. They didn't even have a clear laws or regulations for, uh, that regulate student rights. So the situation was much worse than uh, the public ones. Now we have a very strong student movement. In, it just started very recently, but it's growing day by day, and it succeeded in creating a huge movement all over the private universities in Egypt. They are, till now they are facing a massive, a massive violations from their administration, and also they are struggling against their administration, and they're gaining better ground day after day. A very um, important point here is the public and private universities together created a national student union that was about eight, eight months ago, and it succeeded in writing a new student law for the first time, written by students themselves, that organized student activities and the student rights inside the Egyptian uh, universities, and now they are debating and negotiating with the Ministry of Higher Education to make it as the official law that controls the student activities. Also, they create a very good network all over different, uh, different universities all over Egypt that support active students, active student groups in different um, universities and lobbying with each other. And they, this first step, actually, for me, I find this first step is, we can say, a step forward in creating a new student organization or, or movement and for me also, it's a hope for reforming universities specifically and also for continuing the revolution on the larger scale. And it's also my personal passion. So that's, how, that's why I believe it's extremely important and extremely impressive. They need to work harder, it's true. They need to reach more students. They need to, be, to gain more skills and more money to be uh, to just reach more students and make them and engage them in the movement in general. However, it's really um, a new hope. We need to create a new agenda, and that's how that's how that's what I started. Why I started with the question of organization, because I believe this is a very first step towards creating. A new organization, which is organization in general, is one of the most problematic issues in Egypt. And for me, it was one of the most obstacles in, in front of the revolution and in front of gaining uh, more success. So maybe this could be a new hope for all the situation. And now everyone in Egypt is just focusing on the student movement and also the student, school students, which is very recently and very 
uh, surprise, it was a surprise for each one. They also had a very good movement that just started a few weeks later, and <laughs> we have an accident that around three students uh, were dismissed from their schools who were actually 14 years old for uh, being involved in political activities in their schools. And the Ministry of Education stated that any kind of political activism is forbidden in schools. So this was extremely surprising for, it, for everyone that 14 and 13 and 12 years old boys and girls even uh, they doing strikes in their schools and also standing in the streets holding slogans against the SCAF, against the military and talking about the elections and the presidential elections and the parliament. So that's why I consider this a new hope. Thank you, everyone.